Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. In recent years, consuming raw milk and raw milk products has gained popularity. We visited the Meacock's Bay Dairy Farm to find out more about this trend. This is a farm that has been in my family since the 1870s. We used to grow potatoes and 14 years ago we stopped doing that and I got into dairy farming. In New York State, I'm allowed to produce the raw milk, bottle it, put it in my own refrigerator and people can come to the farm and purchase it. That is the limit. I can't ship it. I can't transport it. It's restricted to the customer coming to the farm. Fortunately, raw milk cheese is not as problematic. The primary thing with raw milk cheese is it has to be aged more than 60 days. I can package it up. I can sell it to a wholesaler. I can sell it to stores, farm stands. I can ship it. There's no restriction on, on that. What's the argument against pasteurization? It's a heat treatment for milk. It destroys all pathogens, all beneficial bacteria. It destroys enzymes, it destroys vitamin, natural vitamin D, uh, a lot of other things that are, that are in milk that are actually good for you. If you're getting rid of good elements in the milk, then you have somewhat less nutritional value. Art points out that pasteurization was developed in the 1800s because milk from sick cows was harmful to humans. The milk from a healthy cow has enough beneficial bacteria in it to make cheese, yogurt, kefir, whatever, as is. It doesn't need any introduction of cultures, uh, and that's from, from healthy cows. So my goal is to produce good quality, nutritious, healthy milk from healthy cows. High quality milk starts with a high quality diet. I'm very concerned about the quality and the flavor of the milk and the cheese, so I'm very careful about what they eat. So they're eating this grass and they're eating dry hay. Not every cow at the farm is being milked. I'm milking 13 cows now and we are producing in total about 50 gallons per day. 50 gallons of milk will turn into about 50 pounds of cheese. Art's raw milk business is relatively small compared to his raw milk cheese business. Most of my milk goes into cheese. Starting out a business like this, you start out with no customers. If we're doing milk, that means that at the same time as we get started, we need customers. Raw milk cheese needs to age uh, more than 60 days, so that would give us some time to get established, get into production, and then consider the marketing aspect and work on that. Every 12 hours, the cows are marched into the old family potato barn for a modern day milking. I can bring six cows in, and this is the unit, and the milk sucks up this line, goes into the pipeline, and gets carried into the other room. This is what we call the milk room. The milk comes into the line uh, from the other room, and it comes into here, fills up this jar. The pump pumps the milk back through here into there. Aside from not being pasteurized, the raw milk is also not homogenized, which causes the fat to separate in the container. The fat had risen to the top, so I'm shaking it up to incorporate that. Uh, if I let it sit for another 24 hours, the fat will be back up on top. What exactly is homogenizing? Homogenizing through high pressure, it forces whole milk through these screens and it physically breaks the molecule into a smaller pieces so that then it will stay in suspension with the milk and it doesn't settle out. Supermarket whole milk is 3% fat. Raw milk is double that figure. So this milk is between 5 and 6% fat. That looks really heavy. Yeah, it is. Finally, it was time to share a glass of raw milk with Art. It's not that much different from whole milk, but there's a, there's a, just a creamier texture. It's real milk. Yep. It's, uh, this is raw milk. Yeah. 